Brady then. So here it is as shown. You can see that all, all everything's kind of finished. I got all of the little um, rigging done in the center and I got the inverted V's um, added in there. Those were just, I didn't show that because it's, it's quite simple. You just made them and then stuck them in their holes. Um, and then I rigged the rest of it. So the sensor is all rigged. That's a little piece of something that goes on top that was very simple to add. Uh, and then I started working on adding these little skids that go on the side. I remember these were supposed to be all one with those struts in the back, but I didn't do that. There's also piping here that goes up. I think it must be a wing gas tank or something. Anyway, this shows that little piece and the shape it's supposed to be. That's the piece that goes underneath the stabilizer. So what I'm using is one millimeter fuse wire. This stuff is golden. Super easy. In fact, it's too easy to bend, so you have to be careful once you've done it because you can make things out of round. But I slide it under a ruler back and forth, and that straightens it out, straight as a die, no matter how wicked look as it is and then you just bend it along that um, um, along that pattern it's a it's a full scale pattern and I tend to grab it with tweezers and then carefully push it right where the tweezer is where that's where the joint's going to be um, sometimes I use my finger sometimes I use something else like an implement like this piece of brass because what you're trying to do is get nice bends make them flat and straight and true and you're trying to basically make them look so that they don't they don't look um, ragged but as long as you run along this this uh pattern this is like tracing something and in this case make sure you got some support on the inside of the bend so that you don't kink it or don't do something something silly with it then i cut it off where i think it's going to end up under the stabilizer and just by by um, doing this a little bit you figure out what that angle is Remember, that was, again, supposed to be one whole piece, and I, that, I thought that would be a nightmare. This turned out to be much easier, at least in my opinion. So it's going to fit right in those little holes. In this case, it won't go in the holes. It's just going to glue right on top. So add a little bit of zip kicker, put some glue on the tips of those, and then just drop it right in. As long as you're careful, your first attempt should be absolutely perfect. And there it is. They're both in. They both look good. Um, I'm liking it. It looks awesome. Now, those are the little pieces that go under the wings. Come from the top and go down. There's like a little S-shape. Same thing. This is the same exact as last time. But as well, it's not a bad idea to show it again. Cut the piece. Flatten it. Use the pattern as a place to sort of trace. You can't. My fingers are in the way. But I'm just carefully bending this again making sure that it's not bending and kinking. That's why I use that piece of brass on the inside of the, of the curve. And I cut it off, and I found that these drawings, and as long as you've done everything pretty accurately on your building, man, they're close to, the, to right. I mean, it's, they fit like a... They fit really well. I mean, those of you who know about Wingnut Wings plastic model kits, sadly, rest in peace, Wingnut Wings, this basically fits like that. I mean, you, you do it right, and you cut everything. There isn't a lot of playing around. So, put a little glue on one tip. That's going to go on the top, on the on the side of the wing. And I put a little bit of zip kicker on there beforehand, and just glue that right in like that. And you can see it stays. Then I just kind of put it down to where it's supposed to go on the top of the nacelle. On the engine nacelle there. Um, you see that little white circle is where that's supposed to attach. So in this case, I just put a little bit of super glue, the thick super glue on there, and take my tweezers and just kind of push it down and hold it. And uh, if you have any white showing, which I think I do, at least on the other side, no harm. You, you can go back and paint and cover it up. It'll look just fine. A little zap of the kicker, and uh, there it is. So I got one on each side. Um, they look good. They look really good, actually. And then there's my tail sections. They're all done. So this went really, really well. Um, <clears throat> very pleased, and it wasn't hard to do. It didn't take more than probably 20 minutes to do the whole thing. Now that is the last piece, which I don't show. That is a piece that's going to go right in there 
and then go into a hole in that headrest place. And I did actually do it and put it in, but it was a really kind of weird thing to bend. And I put it on the wrong side. And I'll show you later. It turned out, but... Now, this is the most important thing. Putting on the bottom wing, I figured, is, is the first thing to do. Make it strong and make it the right dihedral. So what I did was I took the picture and I extended the line on the leading edge and I extended the line that is flat across from the center section. I measured that distance. It was six millimeters on this drawing. So this drawing turns out to be like, based on, on, on the measurements up here, it says 20.47 meters for the wingspan. So that's you know, 2047 centimeters. So based on that, I found out that this model or this picture was, I think, about a 146th or 149th scale. I forget what I have down here. I can't read it. I think it's like 149th, 144th. Anyway, I figured out what that scale was based on the whole size of the model, of that drawing. Then I knew what that scale was, just divided and got 0.02. And then I set up a little... little um, um, math equation here. So 6 millimeters was to 0.02 as x is to 0.03, which is the 133rd size. And that comes out to 9 millimeters, or in this case, you know, a centimeter, essentially. So all I did was find something that would be that size. I also took the wings before I put them on and just put them under the copier, because now I have paper to cut and put over the slots if they're not quite perfect, which you know they won't be. Now what I did was, and this is not how you're supposed to do it, you just butt joint them, but I was a little nervous. I cut a tiny little slot in each of the uh, root ribs, and then I cut this little piece of 132nd balsa tab and cut off the edges so it slipped in a little easier. But I just put them in, just glued them a little bit, a little bit of super glue, not a lot, just enough to hold it in place. The idea is that this would give me a little more purchase, maybe a little strength um, to the uh, when I when I put these together. But this is not where they're supposed to be. Again, this is just supposed to be butt joined together. And I guess if you're super careful, it'll work. But in my case, I'm not careful. So I wanted to put this in just for a little assure insurance. So that little tab is going to give me just something to put some glue on to, and initially get the thing uh, lined up. So that's how I'm doing this. I don't know. I'm sure there's better ways to do it. Same slot over there on the other side on the mating surface. And then I tested them to make sure they fit. And I lucked out on this side. They actually fit really well. So in other words, you know, top to bottom is even and it hits the leading edge nicely. Now I just got to make sure that it's flat on the ground or on the, on the surface, because it, it does kind of fall back on its tail, and I'm just using that, if it was flat, I did a little piece of clay here, and put it under the tail area, and that just made it so that I know that it's not falling back, because that way I use the table as one of my, uh, one of my um, jigs, essentially. I can just put the wing on, and it should be lined up in the right, the right uh, angle, the right angle of intimate. Then I put a little pair of pliers and just sort of put the handles and put it, kind of wrap it around the, the nose and drop it on the leading edge to make it so the thing gave a little bit of weight so it wouldn't move quite so much. And um, just carefully set it there. And uh, this is my super expensive, extremely well-designed jig. Then I tested this, made sure this would fit. And when I slid it in here, it fits in like a typical woodworking joint, just like that. And that's enough so that when I put some glue in there and then put the dihedral in, I think that'll hold really well. And I'm just checking to make sure that, again, it lines up. I don't have a huge step anywhere. And that I can make the leading edge and trailing edges line up as close as I can get them. Um, and so that's what I did. And it, you know, seems to, seems to work pretty well. Just trying to make sure things are straight um, and trying to make sure it's ready to go. Because once you commit with glue, it's got to be... It's got to be right. Um, but this is using a tab. Uh, it was a smart Oh, and there's my pennies. Seven pennies ended up being about a millimeter, a centimeter. And so that's my dihedral gauge. Um, I had better luck 
doing this than using, you know, toothpicks or something because you don't line up a whole bunch of stuff. It's just a slot. A slot's easier to line than two little pinpricks. So I put some of the white glue on the tab, uh, which is fine, give me some working time, and a little bit of super glue on either end. We're going to go back and get some super glue on the joint once it's dry. But I slide this in. I don't use super glue because I'm afraid it'll get stuck halfway in and then I'll be sunk. So slide it in place like I did. Now one thing I forgot to do, which I should have done, put some plastic wrap under that joint. That's an old uh, balsa model, flying model uh, trick. So you don't glue things to your building board. I lucked out, and later on I'll show you. I put some, put some stuff on there, put some uh, plastic wrap under there. But anyway, slide this in. I'm just kind of shimmying it around, making sure it's even, making sure that it's going to actually come together uh, as close as possible. There's my pennies, and there's the wing, and any little gap or anything I'm not worried about because I'm going to hide that. And I'm going to put something in there and glue. That was a good place to put some extra super glue to glue it in place. I did the other one a couple nights ago just to check. Uh, I'm just making sure it's straight and that it's in line. I don't have any kind of huge, you know, it doesn't move or it doesn't, uh, it's not angled or anything. It's basically nice and straight. Uh, and so that's wonderful. Now, there I lifted up slightly and put that plaster wrap under it because... Now I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the surface on the top. It's actually pretty solid right now. But um, I'm just making sure, again, that it's flat. And I'm going to put a little bit of super glue in, the, in a little dollop there. And I took a very thin piece of brass and used that as an applicator. Um, and I just run it along that joint in a couple of places. You don't have to put a huge amount on. But a couple of places where there's a little bit of a gap... I can just put this glue in there. It'll run down by gravity a little bit. And if you smear any on the outside, again, we're going to put a strip of paper over this to hide some of this. But you can pretty easily just sort of slide it off with your finger, wipe it off with your finger. And um, then I hit it with a little bit of uh, zip kicker just to get it going. And then uh, I speeded, I sped this up. But all I'm doing, again, is showing you putting a little bit of glue all the way along where I can. It doesn't have to be everywhere. This glue is strong. It's brittle, but it's strong. And uh, it's just to give me... Uh, what I want to do is make sure I'm holding that dihedral angle. That's really what I'm worried about. So making sure it's in there, hitting it with a zip kicker. And now the thing is, ba in that amount of time, it's basically ready to be pulled apart. So moment of truth, pull these out, and the wing doesn't droop or barely droops. So that's a good thing. A lot of times I put dihedron a little higher than it's supposed to be, because no matter what, the wings always droop slightly. But this turned out pretty nice. I'm not, uh, not at all displeased. So, these are just pictures showing. You can see, it's harder for you guys to see, but it's actually pretty even. It's got a little bit of dihedral on either side, which I, th which I think is pretty scale. It doesn't have to, doesn't want, don't want it to be flat. I can also adjust it a little bit when I put the, other, the top wings on. But I'm just trying to show you the overall shape. Um, the incidence, although you can't see it, the incidence is right. The top and bottom wing incidences is, is, is match. And so now it's a matter of building the uh, eight struts. Oh, it's very strong. I'm trying to show you that it's good. It's in there. I really think you need a good base of strength, which is the bottom wing at the right angle. Because the top wing can be joined just pretty simply at that root, I think. And the struts are going to hold it in the right angle. Um, I put a little glue along there as well. And then zip kicked it just to make sure those are kind of solid. <coughs> just, to, just to be sure. But overall, um, it really is coming together really nicely. This was the part I was dreading, but it worked out. And so now, build those struts. And uh, that should be... That, you know, that's just typical. That's very simple. We've done that many times together. But here it is overall. You can see it starting to look kind of weird with just the lower wing on there. But you can start to see the bulk of the thing. At this point, <clears throat> it's the hardest thing is finding a place how to work on it. Because it is pretty dang large. It's uh, you know, well over a two-foot wingspan. And so um, it's, it's much bigger than things that I'm used to working with. So at this point, you've got to be very, very careful. 
Got to hold it just right. Everything's very strong, but I have managed to not break off control lines and control horns and tails and struts and propellers. I've been pretty lucky, but now I got to really be careful because uh, if I mess it up now, oh, I'll be upset.